Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. The changes to Aatrox passive blood well, they changed it so that his cooldown goes down from levels 1, 6, 11, 16 instead of like 225 all levels. So what this does is makes it so that late game, whenever his passive is down, it just comes back up quicker and he, he can go more or do more aggressive plays. But Aatrox still has some problems in laning phase, so I don't think this will make him that viable. It's just that if you jump in as Aatrox and you can't all in kill someone, then you just uh, become vulnerable. So for Ash, Riot actually decided to nerf her a little bit, which does make sense. Um, her rework actually made her much stronger and she's actually a pretty strong pick now, even though she wasn't played too much in LCS or in competitive play in general. But I think she's still really strong, especially in solo queue. Her ult has always been game changing and now that she does more damage, it's a little bit better. So one thing that they nerfed was the Q. They made it so that um, your when you use a Q, when you have five seconds of Q and you use it on turret, it doesn't do extra damage, so she doesn't melt turrets as quickly. Not a big change, very small. Her W change is slightly big. Um, it's 20 damage nerf at rank one. That honestly, is actually not that big, but it's still a nerf, and it um, the damage goes up just a little bit less until um, it does a little bit less damage until you hit max rank on your volley. Um, not too big of a change since you do max first, so by level 9 your damage is actually equal. And then the last change will be to her E, another really small change, and it just made it so that her E, as it's flying towards where it's going, um, the vision it gives is slightly less, but it shows up more often. It's a weird change, kind of hard to describe it, but in the end, Ash got a slight nerf to her early game, to her poke mainly, and overall she's pretty much the same thing. So Kaylin, she really had trouble with mid game. And once we get a bunch of armor, she just doesn't do much damage compared to a lot of other AD carries because she doesn't have a, have a steroid. But her new passive, or actually her buff passive, basically makes it so that when she has her passive, uh, when she has headshot available, uh, that shot does 50 or ignores 50% of that target's bonus armor. So it gets a tank with like 300 armor. Basically, the headshot, I mean, already does bonus damage, but now it does additional damage because you're ignoring a lot of that armor as well. Um, it's actually a fairly substantial buff. I, I mean, I mean, it's not too big, but once you're looking for a crit on headshot, stuff like that, it's going to really hurt tanks, whereas before, it didn't hurt them as much. The second change is to your W. So, before, I'm, I really know too much about Caitlyn's W. I always assumed it was, it was the same thing, but apparently, um, as you rank it up, I'm assuming that the, uh, the duration it takes for it to arm up is shorter. So with this new change, it makes it at level 1 rank of the trap, the same thing as your level 5 rank of the trap. But honestly, this change is very minor, but it does make it more consistent. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm interested to see how that works. And then her last uh, change is to her ultimate. Caitlyn's ultimate, when you alt onto somebody, it gives you vision. But because of the channel time of her ultimate, there are times when, oh, you press on them, but they run out of vision too quickly, or you dash away and you can't see them anymore, and then you lose a kill or something like that. And this is really to prevent that. Um, I don't think this will change. These changes aren't too big to her, but it does increase her damage overall. And it's actually a buff, one of the few buffs um, JD carries I've seen in a while. For Echo's nerf, they reduce his movement speed slightly, uh, up the mana cost on his W at earlier levels, and made it so the vision is two seconds after the cast of W. It pretty much just overall makes his W slightly weaker because it's a very strong ability at rank one, especially since it was 30 mana before and it. This is free vision you can constantly use to scout for jungler or set up kills and things like that. I think right now, Echo is a really strong champion, but it's hard to tell his exact strength. But I think he is very powerful. This is going to bring him a bit closer to being balanced. So this nerf to Hecker where they're making it so that his passive and his devastating charge doesn't stack with home guard. And then that makes it so that home guard TP is worse. And since uh, they don't stack with his home guard anymore, it's going to take him... A bit longer to go back to lane now. This nerf also makes it so that when he home guard and TP's in in team fight, he would do uh, he will lose a lot more damage compared to back then since nothing stacks with home guard anymore. So he's just gonna come in slower, so he does uh, less damage. I think this nerf combined with all the other nerfs from all these patch notes might make it so that other top lane champions are gonna be picked over Hecarim now since all these little stuff is making it so that Hecarim is uh becoming OP anymore. Jace changes on his melee form, his Q. Max rank does 30 more damage. His cooldown is also 6 seconds instead of 8 and then his slow is 
55 instead of 50, so his Q melee form got buffed. Then his Shock Plus is also increased by 40 at max rank. So he's probably gonna have a lot more poke now, combined with his Acceleration Gate, which is also increased by 5% at max rank from 50 to 55. And small buffs to his W. I'm not sure if Jace will be played top. I think he might be better mid. It's just that he's so vulnerable top lane because he's not that tanky. And he's his just only move speed, so I think he's better or safer in mid lane. The J changes are just an overall buff to every single one of his abilities. You're unable to level his ult anymore, but you can level each ability once more. What this really means for Jace is that even in the past, people wouldn't really upgrade his ult since the benefits weren't that big, but now they're given to him automatically, and every single one of his skills is going to be stronger later in the game. And your power spike is also going to be even bigger because you're going to get another level of shock blast earlier in the game. So this actually makes Jace look pretty promising. Jace can definitely be played in both solo lanes, but in mid, more of his weaknesses are covered since things like lane swaps and counter matchups can really mess him up in the top lanes. So I think he'll be played more mid than top, but definitely viable in both roles. They nerf Katarina's shampoo damage and AP scaling a bit. It's just an overall nerf to a champion that just does very well in solo queue. She's mostly played in the lower elos and it's just a very snowball champion. It's not really going to affect competitive play since she's not being played, but she is a very prevalent pick in solo queue and can really snowball games. And it, This helps keep her down a little bit in the early game with the base damage nerf. Right now, LeBlanc is a very dominant pick in the mid lane. Usually you don't see assassins being blind picked a lot, and if assassins are easy to blind pick, it usually means they're too strong since assassins are mostly used for counter picking. But LeBlanc is a very solid champion and the Reduced missile speed on W and the width on E is going to make her a little bit less reliable and a little bit easier to play around. Um, especially champions like Azir will be able to consistently cancel her distortions. This is going to be a lot slower. He's going to be able to put up his W and uh, use the E to cancel it. So there's going to be a lot more counterplay around the block now. After the changes, she'll definitely be less popular in competitive play. I don't know whether she'll still be played or not, but I could still see her being played as a counter pick into some matchups. The Malphite changes give him a lot of additional armor, so he can be a potential mid pick into really heavy AD comps where someone's playing something like Zed or Yasuo mid, and you can just pick Malphite and get a ton of armor. I'm not sure whether it'll be better to max the W or E second now, because it does give a lot of additional armor, but I guess time will tell. I think it's definitely an overall buff to the champion. So the Malphite changes made it so that his W doesn't do damage to nearby enemies anymore passively. It just gives you passive additional armor. Then his active makes it so that instead of gaining armor and attack damage, you now deal an additional physical damage to nearby targets. So basically, this changes make it so that AD Malphite sucks now. And that you might meet, you might see more of hybrid uh, damage Malphite top lanes now. So the Shen changes made it so that his base magic resistance is now 32, and he has MR per level now. And I think that's pretty huge change to Shen because. He's like, he was like the only tank that didn't have MR per level, and I think MR per level will make him viable again. With his uh, passive key strike getting buffed too, and his shadow dash costing him less energy. Okay, with Shivana's burnout changes, she now does 25% burnout's AoE damage per basic attack for duration. That pretty much just means that she can farm the jungle quicker and clear waves faster, which means that she might be better in jungle or she might be better with the cinder hulk smite meta again because she, she was already clearing jungle camps fast and clearing lane way clearing lane fast so this just makes her a lot better so right now silver is a really strong ad carry pretty much first picked uh or actually banned in a lot of um a lot of games and basically your ultimate is just really good with tanks tanks can run in really easily you can run away from tanks and whatnot so silver is really strong and the change that Riot has done for Sivir is that they made it so the initial speed duration um, in the upper rank, so level 11, level 16, um, the speed that you get is less duration. So what it actually means is that when you pop your ultimate, the first two seconds when you're level 6, you go, uh, you have a higher move speed. It's like 80, 60%, something like that. And then after two seconds, it goes down to 30%. But once you get into upper ranks of the ultimate, you get that... 60% much higher for a lot much longer duration and they nerfed it by two seconds at later rank so late game she actually got nerfed quite a bit her team um utility just isn't as high late game but it isn't that big of a change she still gets the rest of the movement speed the duration overall isn't changed at all so she's still good this change isn't really meant to be um a it's not gonna destroy her it's just a small tap in the right direction 
the Ludens Echo Nurse, where they reduce the AP ratio and reduce the stacks you gain from each ability, is it's pretty weird to me, to be honest. I don't think Ludens Echo is really an OP item right now. It's not bought that frequently. It's bought on some champions and by some players. It's mostly personal preference, and it's a very good snowballing item. So I don't really agree with the Nurse, but I think with the Nurse, we're just going to be seeing it a lot less because there's just going to be a lot more situations where Death Cap is going to be superior. And that's it for this Pro Patch Breakdown. Thanks for watching, and for more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lowclass.com.